Hope you're all doing well. Phil Pendlebury here. And for those of you from the Middle East, Assalamu Alaikum, Mahaba. And for everyone else, hope you're having a super mega large day. All right, so we're here in Nuendo 12 today, and we're going to be going over um, getting started with Dolby Atmos in Nuendo 12. Now, we had a previous video which showed in Nuendo 11 how to do some things. Uh, so this one's slightly different from that. There will be some of the same items, but covered in a slightly different way. All right, so I've got my notes down here. I'm just going to quickly tell you, just uh, for those of you that are here already, um, I'm going to quickly tell you what we're going to do today in case it tweaks your interest. So uh, obviously we're going to be looking at new, uh, new Ender 12 Dolby Atmos and uh, some of the features that are exclusive, exclusive to new Ender 12. Uh, we're going to build a template, uh, which we did before in the new Endo 11 tutorial, but this time it'll be a lot quicker because uh, there's some features in new Endo 12 that make that a lot easier. Um, we're going to set up some of the basics for Atmos mixing, and we're going to convert an existing project uh, for Atmos mixing and then have a quick look at mixing for sound design and music and hopefully if we've got time at the end some info about HRTF, Immerse, Embody and the Ambi Decoder. Embody, sorry. <laughs> and the Ambi Decoder. I'm rushing here a little bit uh, because I know there's a lot to get through and uh, as you know we only have a certain amount of time which we always seem to go over. Um, I've got Terry here. Hello mate, you alright? Yeah, okay, he's not speaking, but uh, he's going to be moderating the chat for me. So if you've got any questions, feel free to shout them out on the uh, on the chat, and uh, I will shout answers back to him, and he'll you know do the, do the necessaries, as it were. Okay, uh, so before we start, I just want to give you a little bit of info about the uh, Dolby Atmos kind of scenario uh, for those of you who are new to it. And there's probably quite a few who are new. Don't be afraid about that because it's a buzzword at the moment. It's something that everybody's talking about. And that's why I decided to do this today, kind of an updated version of the previous uh, New Endo 11 version. So for beginners, yeah, you're in the right place today. For super experience, well, there may be a couple of things that you'll pick up as well. Um, we're going to be using headphones, of course, because we're on uh, YouTube Live, so there's really no way to show you, um, you know, the full Atmos setup. But we will, we'll try and sort of quickly show a couple of those things towards the end. Uh, but it's headphones today. I'll give you a shout. When we start, we'll get, get the headphones on. All right, so Nuendo was the first door to have a fully integrated Atmos production available within the box. Now, there's others that have it now, but Nuendo was the first and, of course, still moving forward um, in that direction. Um, Atmos is part of a technology called object-based audio. So it's a buzzword. You don't really need to know all the ins and outs of that, but it basically means that each sound or uh, let's call it, let's say um, each area of your sound is based on an object which can be moved around and uh, panned and treated in certain ways. I'm not, again, not going to go into detail uh, on that. In Atmos mixing, we use objects, which I just mentioned, and beds. Uh, I'm going to tell you more about objects and beds and what the differences are in a little while. But basically, an Atmos bed is usually 9.1 or 7.12. So it includes two uh, ceiling speakers, only two. Um, and objects can be added to the capacity, whatever you desire. Objects are mono, so if it's stereo, it will be two objects. Again, we'll go over that again in a minute. Um, you can then add items and pan them around your speaker array. So with a bed, it's kind of a fixed thing. With objects, they can be panned individually. You can still pan beds, but it's not one of the things you'd normally do. You'd, usually, you would pan things within the bed. Um, Nuendo itself, of course, includes the spatial multi-panner that includes height as well as all the other things, and we're going to have a little bit of a detailed look at that in a while. Audio gets routed to the Atmos renderer, which we'll set up in a second, and that's included in Nuendo. So there's no need for any extra tools at this point. Uh, Nuendo supports, I've been asked to remind you, first order, second order, and third order ambisonics. And if you're not sure what that is, 
just have a quick Google of it. There's explanations on Google with, um, you know, with diagrams and so on that will make it a lot easier to understand than I can when I'm just talking to a camera. And uh, once we're all done, we can export or create an ADM, which is the Audio Definition Model file, which contains everything. And the beauty of the ADM file is it does contain everything. It's not just like a standard mix down of a stereo or a quadraphonic mix. Um, it actually contains all the automation data, the panning and so on and so forth. Um, and it can then be used in other places. In other words, rendering will adapt to your setup. So if you're sending your ADM file to somebody that has a slightly different setup, it's all adaptable. It's very clever. Um, and rendering is done directly from the project and uh, will produce, yeah, that very file. Right, I think that's enough of, <laughs> enough rabbiting. Um, I'm going to uh, switch the camera off and we'll get into the first part, which is going to be just building a template and a couple of, uh, a couple of little things to either side of that. Let's do it. Headphones on, by the way, although I'm not going to be playing any audio uh, straight away in the template building, but get, get your headphones ready just in case. All right, let's do this. Play. Okay, so here we are with um, pretty much an empty project. In fact, I'm going to clear off everything from this project and we're just going to set up a very, very basic template to get started. And uh, you know, just we'll save it as a template and then you know how that's done. And then when we get to the slightly more advanced stuff, um, we don't need to go back over the, you know, building a template thing or making it into a template. Right, so camera off. And uh, here we are. So, first of all, I've got a project here which has got some dummy tracks on. I'm just going to get rid of those completely. So we've got a blank project there's nothing on it at all um, hopefully you can see although there's nothing to see at the moment and as usual what I'll be doing is trying to zoom in and out to show you all the relevant stuff so there are some pre-requirements in order to work with Dolby Atmos and you may be aware of these or you may not uh, but let's go through them anyway just to be double sure so first thing we're going to do is we are going to go to studio and we're going to go to studio setup and we need to make sure that your hardware is set to 48k um, don't worry about any of the other stuff here but 48k is the key and if you need to know how to do that it'll be different for um for your different uh you know sound devices uh, for example, on mine, this is the Fireface USB. Uh, I've got this uh, little area here where I can set the latency, which is the next thing that's very important, 512 samples. It must be set at 512 samples. Let's just zoom in a little bit on that. There we go. I have to remember to unzoom afterwards, but there you go. So 512 samples, 48K that's important and again we're just going to go to project setup and just verify everything else is set as it should be as you can see record file format i've got a 48k 24 bit not really important the main thing is what we've already done so 512 samples at 48k and it won't work if you don't do that all right, so let's start and show you the new feature of Nuendo 12, which makes setting up a basic kind of project for Atmos super, super simple. OK, so the first thing we're going to do is bring up the ADM authoring tool. And we get to that up in the menu here, ADM authoring for Dolby Atmos. Or if you have it on a key command, that's also handy. Uh, let's get that nicely set into the center of the screen and then I'll zoom in when necessary. Uh, quickly need to point out here that we'll be referring to this tool quite a lot um, throughout the thing today. And in fact, you'll be referring to it a lot when you're doing your mixing. So try to get into the habit of not closing it here like that, because then if you do that, every time we need to go back to it, 
we have to open it from the menu. Or indeed set yourself up a key command. Uh, but what I tend to do, to be honest, is I just try and get into the habit of minimizing it. This is on Windows, of course. Uh, if you're on Mac, it might be slightly different. So you minimize it, then it, then it just sits down there at the bottom of the screen and you can easily open it again without messing around. Right, so that's that out of the way. Okay, so you'll notice if you came from Nuendo 11, you'll notice that, that we have this new little button now called the Setup Assistant. And you'll notice there's no renderer at set at the moment. So we're going to use the new Setup Assistant. So let's just do that and see what happens. So first of all, we've got this dialog that says, yeah, let's get it in the center. ACO driver buffer size must be set to 512 samples. Uh, the project sample rate must be 48 kilohertz, which we've already set, and you've got a nice little green light there. Okay, so the renderer. The options in this section allow you to create a main mix channel with the renderer for Dolby Atmos as an insert plugin. This ensures that the renderer can be used for monitoring your Dolby Atmos project. Right, so this basically is going to do some stuff that you never had that that we had to do manually before. Uh, we're going to choose a 7.14 because that would be the standard thing really, and we're going to add a main mix channel with the renderer. And there's also the bed here. This option in this set, sorry, the option in this section allows you to create a bed group channel and to route all tracks to it. This ensures that all audio is processed by the renderer. Tracks routed to the bed can be defined as objects at a later stage. Well, I don't really like to do that, I've got to be honest. I like to create the bed channel, but I'm not worried about routing any tracks to it at this point because we haven't actually got any. Anyway, it's a blank project, right? So we're going to add the bed and just show you quickly, once we've done that, we'll show you on the mixer how it works. So we don't need to select the option to route all tracks to the bed because we don't have any. All right, so let's click that, see what happens. Okay, so looking over here, uh, maybe we can just move things around a little bit so that you can see. You can see that it's brought up this box here, which is the renderer itself. And there's some nice new features on this, which we'll get to in a minute. It's created a bed. There's no object group. This is really just the naming. It's for your... Um, for your own reference, really. And the binaural is missing because it doesn't apply to beds. So we've got a standard 7.12 bed. And as you can see, it's taken up 10 channels here. All these, you can see like a little yellow line around them. Now we do need to know the difference between objects and beds or a little bit more detail on that. So we'll do that now. One more thing I just want to point out is the down mix setting here. And as we're just monitoring in headphones today, I'm going to set that to binaural. And you'll see that all the channels here disappear. Um, again, we can go back to these a little bit later on and I'll explain what they are, all are uh, towards the end. But for now, we're going to set binaural. And this is great because this is something that we couldn't do um, previously. So this is exclusive to Nuendo 12. The other thing which we won't really refer to too much now, we, we have a nice output level um, readout here with all the, you know, the loudness range and so on and so forth. And we can uh, reset those and, you know, do the usual things. Okay. So first of all, let's have a quick look at what happened on the mixer. So if I bring up... Um, one of my mixers, and we'll just, uh, let's, let's just take this out of always on top mode. And you can see we have a blank channel. Let's, let's put this in the center again. Oops. <laughs> there we go. Okay. So 
you can see that's our main outs, which is still stereo because, like I said, we're monitoring in headphones today. And I didn't want to mess around with the control room. So, you know, we're just going to do it within the, the mixer. OK, so these are inputs, so we actually don't need to show those. So we can get rid of the inputs. So all we have right now, let's make sure that everything is visible. We're not showing groups at the moment, so we need to put groups in. And that should do as I think. Here we go. Uh, where's the output, main outputs? Uh, da, da, da. Output channels, that should be showing. There we go. Right, so we'll have to fiddle about a little bit with that throughout today, I think, because it's nice to have things, you know, organised so that they make sense on the screen. So main outputs on the right, what we're doing is the signals moving from left to right. So we've got the renderer, which has appeared here. And I can bring that up and down by clicking on that. It's an insert. All right. And then we have the standard bed that was just created. And the routing on that is sent to the renderer. That's how it works. And you can see that it's actually a send, which should always remain at zero. We don't want to be messing with this, but that is how the signal gets to the renderer. We then have the panner, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail in a while. So the renderer panel uh, panner itself, we don't really need to touch that. We'll just leave that alone because you don't want to be moving any of your rendering panning you master rendering panning, panning around. And the standard bed, well, the same thing applies really, uh, because what we can do is we can then send items to that bed and pan them, but we don't want to be panning the actual bed itself. So basically, bed, renderer, output. So let's quickly, um, let's quickly talk about beds and objects. Beds versus objects. All right, so um, typically for a bed, you will be like we have done here. We'll be setting it up as, let me just open that up again. Yeah, you can see, as I, I showed you earlier, the 10, 10 channels or the 10 objects that the bed has taken up there. Oh, this is new, by the way, as well, the mute. So, uh, but we do have a total of 128 of these channels. And they can be used for beds or objects, right? So each bed we add at the moment, 7.12, that's going to take up 10. Each object will take up one. However, if it's a stereo object, then it takes up two and so on. So beds are rooted directly to the speakers. So once again, I showed you this and I said I didn't want to mess around with it because this routing is all going directly to the speakers that it says it is here. I don't know if this makes sense to you, but it will do as we carry on. Objects, which include metadata, so that the sound can be placed in the correct place regardless of the speaker setup. So in other words, um, when we get to an object, we can pan it around and if I've got, you know, if you've not got the same uh, speaker setup that I have, it'll still appear in that area of the mix, which is awesome. Um, so yeah, okay, so typical uses for a bed would be diffuse sounds that don't rely on precision placement. So it could be maybe dialogue reverb returns, which we'll get to in a bit, uh, musical ele elements, ambiences, backgrounds, etc. And objects are sounds that require more precise and dynamic placement. However, there are no rules. <laughs> uh, you know, this is the thing with all mixing, really. You can look at lots of tutorials and you can say, oh, well, that's how Dave Pensado does this and blah, 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 blah. Uh, the same thing applies here. I'm giving you kind of a basic framework, but when it comes to beds and objects, once you've figured out your favorite uses for each, 
you will figure out whether you prefer to use beds or objects. Um, and I'm going to go into my workflow for that in a few minutes. Right. So look, we've set up the basic template. Um, and then all we need to do now is start dragging files in. But before we do that, let's just close down the mixer. We'll leave those two hanging there. That's fine. And I just want to quickly show you how you can save this now as an actual template. All right. So that you can bring it up and use it again. So we're going to save as template. You can see we've got the nice little dialog here. And I've got mine, my Atmos stuff actually in a folder. And uh, by the way, I will be putting these templates up on my Discord and there's a link to the Discord if you want to join that later on. So we go, okay, let's call this uh, LS template, live stream template. Uh, template category, well, you can choose, it be production, I guess, content summary. Oops. Oh, collecting tabs, that's new. Let's just say um, blah for now. So all we're going to do then is click OK, and then we will have that as a template. Now, the beauty of that is that then, once that's done, we can go to the hub, and we can go to templates, and you can see all your templates that you have earlier. There we have Atmos, Atmos, Atmos and prompt for project location which is what i always like to do don't like to use the default location um, and basically you will then get a new project um, that has the setup exactly as we've just done it. so now what we're going to do then is we're going to do that process again but this time we'll do it with some actual audio so let's get the headphones on and uh, we'll probably keep um keep whoop. Where's my camera gone? Yeah, keep the headphones on now for the uh, for the rest of the session, I would think. Or at least I'll give you a shout when we when we come to turn them off, when we don't need them anymore. Right. So once again, the same blank project. There's nothing on it. And what I'm going to do is just grab. I've got a couple of bits of audio here. Let's have a quick look. Uh, drums and bass will do. And let's say a guitar solo. That'll do. So I'll just drag that in. Doesn't have to be in any particularly um, in any particularly relevant place. I suppose you know. We'll just we'll just drag it in and uh, let's play. Let's. I hope this is not too loud for you. Let's me. Okay, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's pull the volume down a little bit. So what we're going to do is turn this into an Atmos project. At the moment, quick look at the mixer. Oh, once again. <laughs> I have to quickly configure the mixer. Sorry about this. This is my mistake, really. Uh, we basically just got the three tracks. And we need to see the inputs and outputs. Uh, we need to make sure the outputs are visible, group channels are visible, instruments are blah, blah, blah. And once again, I'm not seeing the output channel because it's not checked. So three tracks. <laughs> So turning that an existing project, we're gonna what we're gonna do is go once again to the setup assistant. So it's the project ADM authoring setup assistant. And yeah, okay. Just making sure that uh, checking my feed here to make sure that uh, things are visible on the screen. So. This time, what we're going to do, we are going to add the channel with the renderer, and we're going to add the bed, and we're going to route all channels to the bed. 
Actually, tell you what, before we do that, let's just do this. Because there was something I, I wanted to show. So we remove that solo, right? So we've got drums and bass, and off we go again. So project ADM, set up assistant, 512.48K, 7.14, add the channel with the renderer, add the bed, and route all tracks to the bed channel. So we're going to do that this time. And voila, off we go. So you can see there, and once again, it's set up the standard bed. And you can see the 10 channel thing there on the uh, renderer. Let's just minimize that, bring up the mixer, and there's the renderer channel. So basically, we're not seeing the bed at the moment. So we need to uh, find that. Uh, ah, there it is. It's over, <laughs> over on the side there. That's why I didn't see it. So we actually need to just move things around a little bit to... to uh... Let's, uh... Let's see. Yeah. I don't need inputs and outputs. Group tracks. So we're going to put the bed in the middle and we're going to have the audio tracks here so now at least you can see the workflow or the flow of the signal that that's what i'm trying to get at here i know i know it's probably a little bit annoying seeing me fiddling around with the mixer but hey this is what we all have to do right so we've got two tracks of audio which are now routed to the standard bed and if we play once again let's just skip over a little bit So you can see that's coming up the main left and right, and that's because we haven't touched any of the panning on the drums and bass here. Um, but once again, we're not going to touch the panning on the standard bed. So if I bring up, for instance, the drums and look at the panner, and let's just play that again. One thing that's really handy as well here is to have some uh, presets that kind of do things like put your bed in the center. So, you know, it saves you fiddling about with the, uh, with the control. So play that. Just as, just as an example. So you can see now that I've moved the panner there, we'll do the same thing with the bass. We'll put it dead center. Not that you would necessarily do this in a mix, but at least we're showing, you know. And of course, the other thing we need to do, oops, keep. Yep, thanks for reminding me there. What we need to do, <laughs> Terry's shouting over. We need to set this to binaural, so it kind of makes a bit more sense to you. So let's play. And there you go, you can see what's going on. You can see that uh, we're getting most of the signal in the central area. There you go. We've also got a bit of LFE level here. And again, we'll get to that in a bit. I think that was probably a bit too much. All right. So that's the bed. So basically what we're doing is we've got two audio channels which are being routed to the bed through the renderer to the main outs. We go back to binaural so we can hear. And I do apologize that the um, audio levels, this is one of the things we're gonna to have to deal with today is audio levels are gonna jump around a little bit uh, when we're switching modes and especially when we get to um, immerse as well a little bit later on. Anyway, need to move on, so let's go. So, okay, so we've rabbited on, rabbited on about beds and so on and so forth. What I'm gonna do now is bring in that guitar solo that um, we deleted earlier on. 
right? So pull that in, and we're going to turn that into an object. So let's do that. So we'll select the guitar solo group. Actually, it says group here. It was the output from a group. And we go back to the authoring tool. You can see we've got the standard bed there. Now we're going to add an object. There's two ways of doing this. Um, we can do add objects and then do it manually. Or we can uh, do the functions here, which is um, we can create objects from selected track. Now there is a limitation of this in that it only works with audio and I think it will work with groups and effects. We'll get to that a little bit later, but for some reason at the moment it doesn't work with VST instruments, which is a bit of a shame. So we have to do it manually. So let's do it manually. So we're going to add an object and you're going to see the guitar solo there, the track. We can call it solo, why not? Um, the object group, well, it'll be music. Again, don't forget, this is just for reference, although the binaural setting is like the basic setting of how that sounds while you're listening in binaural. I don't think it'll be obvious enough to hear over YouTube streaming, unfortunately, but you can always have a quick look at that uh, later on. I'm just gonna leave it as mid for now. So what we'll find now is we should be hearing that guitar solo for a start off. Let's just double check we're hearing it. Yep. And let's have a look how that's appeared. Once again, it needs to be moved over. So this is now a group, uh, an object. And the difference being that there are some slight differences in the panner. And if we bring back up the, have I closed it? I think I have. After all that I just said and what I did was I went and closed it. Yeah. If we bring that up, you can see object and bed, clearly named, right? And if we bring up the actual renderer, which is showing the activity here, let's reset. We actually would tell it not to hold on stop. <laughs> And you can see there, solo one, solo two. So we've taken up two objects with the uh, guitar solo because it's a stereo track. Now, the other thing with this is if we bring up the panner, let's just close the mixer for a second and do a little bit of moving around with the panner. So you can see that it's showing us those two groups where they're panned and of course when we put it all together with the stuff that's in the bed I'm just pointing out that you can see uh, you can see the meters moving here, but once again, back to binaural. All right, so we've got that up and running. And incidentally, if uh, you pulled that audio in and we didn't set it as an object, so let's just do one more. Uh, I think I've got something here. Uh, let's go for Vox. Uh, again, this is not all lining up properly, but I have another project which I'll bring in in a second, which has everything kind of lined up. So there's the Vox channel, I've just dragged it in and we're not hearing it because it needs to be assigned either rooted to the bed, which we would do. Again, need to just pull that over there. There it is. So we either need to route that to the standard bed so you'll hear it within that group here. And in fact, I always feel it's a good idea to have the bed in uh, solo defeat, by the way. Um, or, once again, so we're playing. 
no vocal. So we go back to the ADM tool, which again I've closed. Should be practicing what I preach, shouldn't I? Uh, so we're going to add object. We're going to pick the box. We're going to call that still music. It's not dialogue because it's a vocal. And we're going to call it vocal, vocals with a Z. And now we should. There you go. There's a problem to solve. All right. So again, we could have, let's uh, undo that. So it's disappeared and let's bring it in again. And I'm just going to show you, seeing as we're in detail here, once again, you won't be able to hear it now. So if we select that track and we go back to the ADM authoring, and this time, let's just get rid of the existing one. And this time, create objects from selected tracks. And there, it's done it all for you instead of us doing it manually. Like I said, I prefer to use the manual method uh, because some things don't work with the automatic one. Right, so we should be back in business. Oh, I've done it again. <laughs> yeah, let's keep that there and just minimize this time. Right, bringing up the mixer, put the vocal where it needs to be so you can see the signal chain. And once again, let's just pull the vocal to the front a little bit and bring in some of the bring in the width a little bit and have a play so now it's unreasonable this and impossible that so dry as a bone vocal so if we need to do this i i, I should show you so here we go instrument track retrolog add track and there's your retrolog. And if we put it into uh, monitor mode, you'll see that we can't hear anything. So once again, we'll go back to the authoring tool. Everything else is set as it was. And if we have that retrolog track selected and then go create objects from selected tracks, you'll see that nothing happens. And uh, as far as I know, Steinberg are working on this, so hopefully that will be sorted soon. Uh, it's not a bug, it's as designed, but, you know, it's just one of those things that wasn't implemented. So what we do, we add an object, we go input retrolog. We'll call it retrolog. Or something like that. We'll set the group to music, just for our reference. Minimize, and now... And if I bring up the mixer, uh, let's move Retrolog over to the left so it all makes sense. So we've got our groups, our uh, objects, and there's Retrolog. And that's going directly to the renderer as another stereo uh, pair, of, pair of objects. Okay, or pair of channels, so 15 and 16. If it was mono, uh, then you'd only be seeing one of those. So again, we can pan that around, mess around with it, do whatever we want. Let's put it there for a second. And you can see. Ow. I'm looking at the wrong place, aren't I? Never mind. That's exactly what I was saying we shouldn't do, isn't it? This is the panner. And that's what I was saying, be careful of, about uh, panic, accidentally panning the renderer or the standard bed, because we don't want to do that. And ideally, what you'll do is you'll set up a preset with it exactly in its default area like this. So if you ever make that mistake that I just made, you can just quickly reset um, with that preset. So, all right, render, there we go, Retrolog. This is definitely Retrolog. It's a stereo pair. We'll move it somewhere. We'll move it up a bit. And we'll get to the actual how the panning works in a second. So now again. And if I show you the renderer, you'll see that's where we put it. Um, okay, so let's see now. Um, right, yes, here's, here's one thing that's quite important. 
Um, I'm going to just play again the track and you'll notice. <laughs> So you'll notice there that you're not seeing any level on the guitar or the vocal. Uh, in fact, any of the um, any of the object channels you won't see. Um, so what we have to do in order to be able to see some level from those is we'll go to global uh, i need to now then you're not going to be able to see that are you uh, let's move the mixer up just for a second yeah so we'll select global meter settings and we're going to go instead of post panner we're going to set post fader and now You can, you can see uh, some activity there. Obviously, it doesn't show the individual channels. It only shows activity uh, because it's post fader. Um, so we won't see all the panning information, but we can now see the levels. And a final thing before we open up the next project um, is just want to quickly remind you how this is working. All right, so you can see that the... Um, bed and the and the objects that we created are all being sent to the renderer channel here by sends so don't touch those they should be locked in place these two channels are being routed to the actual bed itself so these two channels go to the bed these are objects that go directly to the renderer and the bed also goes to the renderer via ascend okay so we deleted all that and what we're going to do now is we're going to open up a project um yeah we'll activate quick drink hmm. so this is converting uh let's get camera there we go Whew. Technical problems with the buttons. Right, so this uh, that was kind of a little bit of a delve into the, the surface of things. So what we're going to do now is convert an existing project. Um, so we'll, a stereo mix, for example. Um, we're going to convert that into an Atmos project. All right, so let's do that. And what we'll do is we'll move a little bit quicker now because I've, I know I've been rabbiting a little bit. Um, but what we're going to do is you know, a little bit quicker. We'll convert the convert the existing project um, into an Atmos project, and then we'll have a look at the panning and so on and so forth. Right. So we've got uh, what's we got? One, two, three, four, five tracks. Don't need the click. Actually, there's a vocal in the reverb there. It doesn't matter. That's that's an export of the actual um, an export of the actual effects that were taking place in in that mix. It's not a mix. Obviously, it's a demo mix. Uh, there's tons of stuff missing. You get the picture. So, just imagine this is our our you know ongoing stereo mix. And what we're going to do is once again project. Uh, we're going to go to the um, authoring tool, set up assistant, and what we we'll do is we'll send, uh, we'll, same thing, 7.14, we'll add a bed, and we'll route all tracks to the bed channel. So that should get us up and running super quick. So click, and once again you can see there's the standard bed being created, the 10 channel bed there, 7.1.2. And we'll go back to binaural mode. So I have to keep an eye on the levels here, guys. Please forgive me if the levels are jumping up and down. 
and uh, let's play. So that's it. Everything's rooted and done. Once again, I will quickly set up the mixer. Ah, keep doing that. I'll quickly set up the mixer so it makes a bit more sense. So again, we're getting rid of all the inputs. Um, the folder is fine. We'll keep those all on the left. And the zone, the drums, bass, guitar, pianos, and the effects, the renderer is there. We need to show groups so you can see the actual bed channel, which is there. There's the renderer. And of course, the main output has disappeared again. Da -da -da. There it is. Okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> I see what I'm doing. I keep, yeah. All right, so there's the main output. Here we have, again, now automatically all the drums, bass, guitar, piano, and so on have been routed to this bed that we play. And they're all still in the same position they were, which is left and right. The routing is to the standard bed. The sends, well, there isn't any because the bed is doing the sending. And yeah, off we go. We could actually start mixing right now. Let's. Etc. We could, you know, we could. We could happily carry on and do a Dolby Atmos mix like this, um, just using the standard bed, um, you know, as, as, as the mix channel kind of thing. However, we don't really want to do that, do we? So we want, we want at least the guitars, guitars, bass, pianos, and yeah, the, at least those would be objects, really. So... Let's see if we can do that and see how painless it is. How do we get those channels into objects? Let's just select them. Uh, we'll just have a quick look at the mixer. Yeah, rooting. They're still rooted to the bed, so it might not actually let us uh, do this. But let's just give it a go. So we're going to say, create objects from selected tracks. What happens? It tells us that they're already in use. So that won't work. And uh, just to prove that, have a listen. You can see that we've got the objects now, but they've disappeared uh, because they're still rooted to the standard bed, although the sends to the renderer have been set up. So what we can do is we just go as, yeah, let's hope this works. We can just set them to the There you go. So we've got the renderer, uh, the, the three new objects now, and you can see their objects. So hopefully you can see that if I zoom in, you can see that they're, um, you know, set to, these three are set as objects, which you can tell by the panner. And these two are going to the bed. And once again, don't forget, the bed is like a group. Well, it is a group, physically, but it also behaves like a group. So you can send things to the bed and the bed will take up 10 channels all the time. And the panning that you do um, happens within the bed itself. Objects are all individual. So once again, if we just have a quick look at the renderer channel, you can see now we've got the standard bed across the top, which is the drums and the bass are going to that through this group. And then we've got the three stereo objects, one, two, three. And if we hit play now, you should be able to see. Right, so I think what we need to do now without actually physically, um, without actually physically doing a full mix, I think, I think we should have a quick look at the panner itself. And, uh, and how it works, uh, because there's a few features on here. What we'll do is we'll use the object panner um, and we'll have a kind of a close-up, you know, a little bit more in-depth in look 
at what the controls on the panner do. So if I actually put this to one side, put it over here like this, and we will solo, oh, did I pick the right one? We'll solo the guitars there. So it's a stereo group, but hey, doesn't matter. And what we do is we'll show the renderer. I need to put this back on top so it doesn't keep disappearing. Oops, yeah, okay, so bring up the panner. And now we should be able to see. So, and if I put this back to actual 7.14 mode, it's not gonna kind of sound quite the same, but again, that for this purpose, it doesn't matter. Volumes are back up. And so at the moment you can now see the signal source, which is the yellow and red and gray circles there. You can see that it's set to left and right, and you can actually see that on the object view as well. So a little bit about the multi-panner. Uh, obviously, it's very powerful. And according to Steinberg, this plugin uses constant power panning laws. This means that the power of a source channel is identical to the power of the corresponding output signal. Um, not going to, you know, go into too much detail on that, but let's just have a look at some of the controls. And there's one particular thing. Um, which uh, it's hidden almost. It isn't hidden, but anyway. All right. So you can see here we've got the top-down view. So if you imagine your head is in the middle looking forward, and as you can see, you can also follow it over here. Um, as you can see, as I'm pulling this further back, you can see it's moving from basically the front of the room to the back of the room. All right? So let's... So, and you can, you can also see this being reflected on the metering here. <clears throat> However, if we go into binaural, you might actually be able to hear it if you've got your headphones on. So you get a, a rough impression of that. So that's basic. That's front, rear. All right, and then on this side, we've got looking at it from the back. So if you imagine that's a great big screen in front of you and uh, what you can do, it's a little tricky grabbing hold of these actually, but, but there is other ways of doing it. Uh, what you can do with this is move up and down. So we can move to the front, to the back, and we can move up and down. Now all these controls across the top, um, we can go into fine scaled, which means it's gonna move much more finely. And we can turn that back off. Let's go back to normal. Um, so this will allow horizontal movements only. So no matter what we do with the mouse, it's only going to move to the left and the right. And up and down still works, but the actual main signal will only move left and right from where it is. And of course, the same thing goes for vertical, diagonal, and so on. Uh, let's skip those for now and uh, position the left and right independently. Okay, so we can go, right, I want the right part of that guitar to be there and the left part to be, you know, somewhere else. Which is quite neat. Then we have the elevation patterns. Again, uh, maybe a little bit advanced, but they kind of speak for themselves. Um, instead of just having like a plain room, you've actually got a pattern which will enable, if you look, see, it follows that pattern there, uh, which can be useful if you want to kind of lock everything together. Um, there's different amounts of zones for the panners. We're going to leave that exactly where it was, and we're going to put the elevation panel on the pattern off, make sure this is back where it was. And what I want to do now is just reset this, you see? So luckily I've got a preset object center. So now, now we're in the center. And we can have a look at some of the other features. Okay, so the positioning. Well, let's just leave, leave everything dead center. So center up and down and center left and right as well. And just move some of these and you'll see. So left and right pan. You can see this is the left 
and the right channel and as you can see if I move that Yep, you can get the idea. Very So now we get to the, the kind of more unique stuff. Um, the rotation, which obviously is rotating around that center point, but it's not moving up or down, it's just rotating around the center point of the here on the uh, top down view. The tilt, which is doing the same thing, but the other way around, it's doing it on the up and down view. So we'll put that back. And. This one, you're not going to see a great deal unless we move these out of place and then it'll still kind of, yeah. That's the tilt X and the tilt Y. Then we have the orbit center. And this is the bit that I wanted to show you. So let's, this is something that I'm sure a lot of people will have missed, even if you're more of an expert than I am on this. So let us quickly... Um, Let's just set the orbit. So I quite, I quite actually, I do actually quite like to do this. Um, so if I've got, let's say, a guitar and a piano, I might want to put the guitar over to one side and the piano to the other side. Uh, let's take the width a little bit in. And you see we've got the orbit center there. And I'm going to move it across. Now then, there's a little button here that, yeah, it doesn't really make itself obvious. It's called the divergence or counter shot. And this is all to do with the divergence control. So look what happens. If I do that, it's going to move to the exact opposite of where it was. So how useful is that? So you can, for example, you could set up your guitar and you could set up your uh, piano and if you want them to be in opposite parts of the room, let's rotate it back around there a little bit. And a little click of that button will move everything to the opposite of what it was. All right. So the object size, that, yeah, that's uh, for a whole other video, really. Speaker snap, well, that will snap to speakers. We really don't want to use that for, for objects at this point. Width, I've just showed you. Depth. Um, actually, the depth and the height won't, won't do anything in object mode at the moment. Uh, so I think we've covered everything really we need. It's nice to, to see that, that we've got a green light to the renderer at the moment. Um, because this, there was a bug with this in the previous version. So that's, that's the objects. Uh, let's have a look. Are we in object mode there? Which one did we send to the bed? Yeah, okay. So bed mode, and there's not a huge amount of difference here, to be honest, except for you do have an ability to send a little bit of LFE signal. Uh, please be careful with that one, though. Um, and, yeah, I suppose, really, it would be handy to just quickly explain, yeah, uh, the divergence thing. No, we're running out of time, so let's, let's move on. Let's move on. You can, uh, we can either do a, another, another video or we can, uh, we can, you know, you could have a look um, online. So I think we've had a decent look at the basic features. So what I want to do now, I'm going to try and kind of reset everything. And I want to show you how to add, because I know, I know uh, people will have been asking this. So I want to show you how to add a, um, a surround reverb and I think what I'm going to do is pull in that vocal as well hopefully this matches up I can't remember actually so this is going to take a second but I'll just configure it so that we've got like a rough mix going on and I'll use that um, that vocal as an example we're in binaural mode we'll close that down for now let's have a quick listen in loop Yep, okay. So bring up the mixer. And as I was explaining earlier now, because I've got everything here, I'm just going to be able to reset everything to center. 
just so we know where we are. Effects. And we'll kind of treat this a bit like a, a mix, but I, I, one of the things that obviously we're missing at the moment, pull this down again, is there's a vocal missing, and when we hear that vocal, like you did earlier on, put it over here. Well, first of all, you can't hear it right now because it needs to be rooted and set up as an object. So it's already rooted to the renderer. So once again, back to the ADM, which this time I remembered to minimize <laughs> instead of close. And what we're going to do now, I've got the uh, track selected here. So we're going to create an object. And let's just rename it to vocal. Oops. Sausage fingers. All right. So I think we're all right there. I think I've, there's probably a couple of things that have gone slightly amiss while we've been fiddling about. Let's see. Till now it's unreasonable this and impossible that. So we'll put that center of the room and the center of the height. There's a problem to solve. So what I've got here is, a, is an export of the actual effects from the whole track that was done earlier on. So actually, if we play this with the vocal... OK, so we're not getting any bass at the moment. Right, so let's say that I didn't have any effects here. Um, so, now it's this and impossible that. so you've got a pretty much dry vocal. There is a little tiny bit of effect in the background. So this is where things start to get a, a little bit, uh, a little bit more complex and maybe a little bit more interesting as well. Um, adding surround reverb. Mm. And this is something that actually took a lot of time to kind of figure out over the years and then recently it's changed a little bit but there's a few ways to do this so I'm going to try and cover uh, let's see have I got I've got kind of three different techniques for, um, for surround reverb so let's let's give that a go camera off I'll just turn the camera on there show you that I'm still here and still alive. Right, so at the moment, don't forget the send situation. The sends are only being used to send the object stuff to the renderer. So we can keep sends open for now. So the first way I would like to show you would be to add a group and we're going to make it a 7.12 group. And the audio output would be the renderer. So this is going to be like a group bed. OK. Um, so it's another bed, basically, as it was before. So we'll call this reverb bed. And there's the group. Um, once again, bring up the mixer. Let's make sure everything's in the right place. There it is. Should actually really be before the standard bed, I think. Ah, it doesn't. It doesn't matter. It's. It's. Yeah. It doesn't matter. Okay. So. So and um, we will set that to solo defeat, so that no matter what we do, the um, reverb channel will never be muted. Right, so now I'm going to insert, let's find a full surround reverb. I've got Cinematic Rooms Professional, that'll do nicely. Might take up a little bit of CPU, but uh, there she is. And yeah, okay. So we, we don't really need to show that, we don't need to worry about it, but that's a seven point, and uh, okay, yeah, we do need to show it. 
uh, 7.12 reverb now. It's adjusted itself, it's done what it's supposed to do. And now we can send to that reverb bed channel. So let's uh, run the vocal. So now it's unreasonable this and impossible that. There's a problem to solve and the world's in a trap. And of course, at the moment, you're not actually going to hear that properly unless Let's just figure this out for a second. Not, yeah, of course we're not hearing that because we added the 7.12 and we called it a bed, but we didn't actually uh, root it as a bed. So um, there's a couple of ways, as you saw earlier on, that we can do this. Um, and as you can see here, it's not set up as bed. So all we can do is add the bed there and there. We can just select that as the reverb bed and all the routing will have been done for us don't worry about these for now bed 7.12 etc etc and we should be hearing that now if we're lucky okay so you can see let's have a look at why that wasn't working um the sending to the renderer and of course the, the routing to the renderer uh you can always just copy the settings from a from a bed and, and you'll, or let's say not copy, um, c compare, compare, and you'll see that if there's something wrong and why it's not working. So there we go, that, that, that was pretty straightforward apart from my usual IQ drop uh, whilst live streaming. And uh, let's play. So now it's unreasonable this and impossible that. And of course we do have the ability within that um, reverb now to, to pan things even though it is a bed but as usual don't really recommend touching that if you're going to do anything with a 7.12 reverb you could probably try to do it uh, within the reverb itself um, if it will play so now it's unreasonable this and impossible that okay there's a problem to solve yeah so we're not, not going to mess with the not going to mess with the actual reverb. Let's just hear the whole thing together and make sure it's working. But as I mentioned earlier on, the problem with that is it doesn't doesn't give you as much flexibility because it's 7.12 now a lot of people just stick with that and that's fine uh but what i'm going to do now is get rid of that altogether the reverb bed as it were and we're also going to go back ah once again i've closed it i'm going to go back here and remove that bed that we just made And what we're going to do now is make another surround reverb, but this time we're going to make it as a group of objects. So it's a 7.14, which means we've got the full flexibility and it'll be all the objects will be used. So look, I'll just go through this and hopefully it'll make sense. So first thing again, new group, add a group track. And this time we'll call it 7.14 reverb uh, object group. And this time we're going to call it, we're going to use the 7.14 configuration and voila. Okay, that's stage one complete. So we open that up, we route it to the Atmos bus, which we'll get to, yeah. And there it is, there's nothing in it. So once again, we need to add the reverb. We'll stick to the old faithful Cinematic Rooms Pro. And you could see here, it's picked it up as 7.14. That's great, okay. But once again, solo, and we'll set that to solo defeat. So now it's unreasonable this and impossible that. 
sending to the group. So we're using the group like an effects channel, aren't we? So, so now it's unreasonable. And you can see it's being sent, but you're not hearing anything. So what we need to do is let's just double check. Whoops. The multi panel is set, which it is. And we also need to make sure that it's render, uh, set to the um, renderer. And then what we can do is we can select this track. And this is, this is the interesting thing. Um, if you can, can't see very clearly, let's just, yeah, okay. We'll, we make sure, so you, you can see the selected tracks, right? So we make sure that we've got the group track selected. And this is the interesting thing compared to, like I told you earlier, that the auto function will work with audio and not with VST instruments, but it does work with groups. So I've got that group selected and I'm going to create objects from selected tracks. And voila, we have now a whole bunch of objects uh, which are assigned to our um, reverb. And so now, let's have a quick look at the renderer, if I've still got it. Yeah, you can see reverb, 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 all the reverb groups there, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So now, we should be able to, again, I'm going to have to close that. This an impossible fact. There's a problem to solve, and the world's in a trap. And there you have it. So that's now a 7.14 reverb object group, which is all super handy. So now it's unreasonable. This Right, okay, so there's one other way. So, and this one really is kind of, it's the most complex, but it's kind of the daddy of them all, really. Um, and yeah, camera on. This is, this is really the one that I like to use. Um, I've showed you the others because they all have their uses. Uh, but this one is kind of the most, you know, for me, it's the most useful. So let's go into that. Try and concentrate. And of course, you can always watch back, can't you, later on. Let's go a quick drink. So what I like to call this is an object effect bed. Although it's not a bed, we make the bed that's only for effects. And then we can route the effects to that. And this way we can have a full 7.14 and route as many effects as we want to anywhere within that effect bed. So once again, new group, 7.14. Uh, make sure it's rooted to the Atmos bus uh, renderer. And we'll call that Object effects bed, although it's not a bed, don't forget, we're just using that because, yeah, let's just leave the name. We haven't got time, have we, to mess around? Okay, and let's have a quick look. Right, so we've got our object effects bed here. The routing is to the renderer. So, what I want is that to be a similar thing to the uh, standard bed 7.14 though so it's an object bed you won't be able to do 7.14 with a standard bed so it's not a bed but it's doing a similar thing right so <laughs> we're going to go back up again how many times do i have to tell myself here um to keep this window open uh we need to remove that one that we created earlier we need to make sure that that track is selected and then we are going to now 
do the same thing again, create objects from selected tracks. There it is, object effect bad, bed. Um, don't forget there's no, incidentally, there's no sub. Uh, that's why you're getting 704. I, sh I should have mentioned that earlier. There's no sub channel here. Right, so that's all rooted and ready to go. So now we just need to make sure this is set on multi-panner, which it is, and we don't need to touch that again. It should be in object mode, which it is, although it's a bed, but it's not a bed. <laughs> okay, so we have got, let's see, uh, we've got our object effects bed. Let's just have a quick, another quick look over at the ADM. You see objects effects bed, but they're objects, they're not, a, it's not a bed. Uh, so we're using 11 channels. Um, there's no um, seven point, there's no one there, there's no sub. Right, so now we're just going to create an effects channel. We're going to route it to that bed. Um, and we'll use the one that I've got there, Tai Chi. And we'll call it TC. Da, da, da. Take a second, we don't need to see that as long as I've got it on uh, complete wet mode, 7.14. And we'll go back to the mixer and you can see the effects here. Let's put that into uh, solo defeat. So the routing shown here is that that it looks a little bit counterintuitive because it's the wrong way around. But let's just play and so now it's unreasonable this and impossible. That's this problem to solve. So that's basically how that works and this means that you can add as many effects as you want you don't have to do them as effects you can do them as groups route them to the fx bed uh, and play around with them to your heart's content so if we put that all together now You get the picture. Okay, so uh, listen, we're running out of time. I'm going to quickly show you um, one more little thing. Let's. Uh, the idea was here to actually do some mixing in music, but we have done that before, so not to worry. Uh, but what we'll do is we'll just. I'll just bring up a sound design project and uh, show you um, some of the slightly more interesting stuff that we could do in the mix. Bring so we're going to close down uh, this current project that we're on. And we'll delete the files that we made. Actually, let's close that project as well. because Don't need that. And go back to the hub. And I'm going to pull up uh, this one here. And here it is. This is uh, something that we did um, on one of our earlier tutorials. And this is an existing, um, this is once again a stereo um, sound design. So we've got the little movie with the guy getting on and off his bike. Or getting on the bike and pedaling off. And that's a stereo, uh, stereo job at the moment. Uh, we need to bring the, because there's no music now in all the effects and so on. So here is, here is how I would turn this into an Atmos project very, very quickly. So um, first thing I'm going to do, you would probably want to remove all the automation and the group tracks. Uh, because we're short on time now, um, what I'm going to do is just uh, bring up once again the setup assistant. So here we are. And add the main channel with the renderer. And uh, let's see, we'll make a bed, but we do, don't want to root any of the channels. So that's that. And once again, we've got the bed and we've got uh, nothing else. So, and there's nothing rooted to anywhere at the moment. Um, we'll just Minimize that. We'll leave that there for now. It's going to be difficult. I'll try and zoom in on this so you can see. And now you'll still hear 
that, uh, sorry, you won't hear anything because nothing is rooted to the renderer. So once again, renderer going to main outs. So what we need to do is decide on quickly uh, what we're going to use as objects and what we're going to use as beds. So for this uh, purpose, once again, we bring him up and what we do is we know we've got this standard bed because it's always created. There it is um, at the bottom. So what I'm going to do is get the um, atmosphere channel, which is actually a group, and I'm just going to route that to the uh, standard bed. So we should hear that now, hopefully. Now, of course, because we've routed it there to this standard bed, we can actually, yeah, we can actually do some panning on that if we want to. Now, this is where things really start to take off, and I'm sure you've been anticipating this already. Um, but, of course, it's, it's saving um, the automation of the panning. So, atmosphere, well, you wouldn't really want to pan it, I don't think. Although... There is some kind of car noise there that you might feel um, you might feel that you want to be more specific as if it's coming as if it's coming from this uh, little area which is open to the outside, as it were. But let's not worry because we're out of time. So, so that's the um, ambience. So the next thing is all the other stuff. I've got stuff grouped here. So I've got the steps grouped. You're not hearing it, but that is a group at the moment. Let's just turn off the automation from that. And what we do is we'll select the steps and noises and everything else, basically. Uh, won't worry about the music and the voiceover. Uh, so we'll select all six of those tracks. We'll go back to the um, ADM tool and we'll tell it to create objects for us. Steps, noises, cloth, rattle, riding away, tires. Okay, so they're now all objects and they're already rooted. The groups I won't bother with now because I'm really conscious of time. Okay, so we've done the um, bed, as you can see there, which is now just the Atmos. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I've removed the routing, so let's route them to renderer. And then we'll go back to the ADM tool and we'll ask it to take those selected tracks and make objects from them. Okay, so there we have now all the individual elements are objects, um, which you can see here over on the renderer side, um, except for the Atmos, which is a bed. So, right, let's start with the steps. What I want to do, let's have a quick look. Coming in from the side, and then that's it. So what I want to do is sort of squash that down a little bit. So we'll go for width. We'll take it down to something like that. If we really want to be kind of accurate, I suppose what we could do is rotate it. So he's walking across ways and we'll pull it over here. So what we're going to do is this kind of thing. Oh, let's go back to the beginning. I do apologize. There we go. And one more time. Okay, so that's roughly how it sounds. So we're going to right mode with the automation. We'll go back and we'll get ready to move. Uh, let's do that one more time. Grab hold. Okay. Turn right mode off. And the other thing we need to do is kind of just fade in a little bit, isn't it? Because it's a bit, um, bit loud at the beginning. So. so, and the footsteps, of course, would be at the bottom. 
on the ground. So that's where we want those. So here we go. I'm going to just put right mode on again and we're going to go back to the steps channel and just fade them in. Fine. OK, now there's a lot of fiddling about that goes on here, usually behind the scenes. I'm, I'm sure you know, um, or maybe you don't, but you get the idea there. So we've managed to create footsteps which are coming in from the side. Uh, but not only that, they're down at the bottom of the picture. All right. So and I've got them uh, quite loud so that you can hear what's going on over the stream. Right, so we're nearly there. Let's uh, let's go for the bike noises. We'll have a look at him. Um, actually, cloth cloth noises. Let's see what that what's going on there. All right, so he's already the cloth the cloth noise is already in the centre. That's just him getting on his two little foot movements on the bike. So if I go to cloth and once again, we're in object mode, let's find out where that cloth sound happens. All right, so pretty much around the center area. So what I'm going to do this time, uh, it's a mono uh, file, incidentally, so we don't have the two, you know, the two things that we had earlier on. So what I'm going to do is just lift that up a little bit bring it round about the center of the picture and just get ready to automate from there. So let's have a watch. We'll follow him. All right. So we automated that. And now if we play that back, and so basically what I'm doing is using these two things here as a kind of guide as to where things are happening on the picture. Um, so we'll leave that in right mode. Now the next one is the, uh, let's say the bike noises. So we've got riding away. Okay. So let's bring the bike noise up. Whoops, there we go. There it is. I do apologize. OK, so here's the bike noise. It's going to start around there. So I need to be ready. Once again, it's a mono sound. So it's about a little way up the picture. And it's going to start on the side somewhere around about there. So we go to automation. We're going to play and we're going to get ready to move him. All right, and then we're going to go back and do that all again because it not only does he move left and right, but he also moves upwards. You get the idea, I think. OK, so we are now getting close. Uh, once again, that would need some volume automation. But let's not worry. There's another sound, which is also, I think, the tires on the on the uh, whoops on the concrete. Yep, there it is. So let's get ready for that one. Uh, where is he? I can't find the tires here. There it is. So we want a similar automation to the um, to the previous. In fact, we could really just copy that, but for the sake of a couple of seconds, I'll just do it manually. So we're starting from around there. Off he goes. And once again, do the same thing with the height. So that's all ready to play back.
I think we've done enough. I think, honestly, I mean, this is, I know, a very rough job, but I think, we, I think we're close enough to kind of, um, you know, for you to see the, the overall effect there. Let's just take it out of solo. Super cool. I, I'm pretty sure that's um, that's about it for now. We were going to go into some HTR, uh, HRTF stuff, um, some headphone, head-related transfer function uh, things using Immerse and Embody. Um, but I think uh, what I'm going to do is save that for uh, for another another session because we really are running out of time. So yeah, okay. I think we're going to call it a day there, guys. Um, Big thanks to Terry for helping us out there and uh, to make sure, yeah, camera's on. Um, big thanks to everybody for sticking around. It's a tough one, isn't it, Dolby Atmos, because, especially on a live stream, uh, because setting up and all the different options must look very confusing, especially if you're, uh, if you're just starting off. Um, and do forgive me that we rushed through a little bit with the mix there, but we'll do another one. We'll make, you know, go into, we'll take up, pick up from where we left off. Also, uh, don't forget, like I said, that I'll be putting the templates up on my Discord if you, if you want to check that out. Uh, right, it's time for a, a drink of lemon juice and uh, time to move off. Um, hope this made some sense. Hope it's going to help you uh, with Dolby Atmos in Uendo 12. And I look forward to seeing you again uh, next month sometime. All the best. Cheers for now.